Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do something that we generally can't do in Figma XD and Sketch, and that is to create a realistic glass with the realistic lighting, with the realistic material and realistic animation. So I took this little guy as inspiration or for reference, and today we're gonna create something just like that. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So to begin with, we have this nice little web page created for us. If you want something just like this, then I will have a link to a community file in the description, which you can copy off. Now, to begin with, all we need to do is make sure that everything is well placed and there's enough space for our little friend, the glass friend on the right here. Of course, you can adjust it according to your preferences. And to see for reference, we are going to create a basic rectangle like this, just so that we know where we need to place our 3D objects. Make sure it's behind the text and above any effects that are in the background. Now what we need to do is go to our browser, Chrome, Firefox, everything works. Once you've done that in Figma, go to your browser, search for spline.design in your browser. Now here I need to say open app. You don't need to download anything for this. And as you can see, if you've logged in, you'll see something like this. Now there's a little file at the bottom called noise displays. That is exactly what I want. So I click on it and it will open a new file for me. As you can see, there's this nice little distorted uh, circle which distorts around and it looks like a little jelly kind of floating. So we're not gonna fiddle with this a lot, but we are definitely gonna change the colors for our Figma design, just like we had. In this case, I want a little more bluish purple hue and for every property or material here, I'll just check which is set to pink and I'll change it to a more bluish purple look like this. Not only that, you need to do it for state one as well. So there are two states, uh, state one as well as state two. Once you set your preferences for the colors, this is your background, nice little background effect. However, in this case, we want to now create our glass card in front of it. It could be any shape, circle, rectangle, sphere, cylinder, pyramid, whatever you like. Now to do this, I want to create a rectangle. Right next to this plus, there's this rectangle. And I will put a rectangle anywhere on the screen like this. Awesome. You can do it with a 3D shape like a cube or a triangle. But for my purpose, I'm going with this. Of course, if I hold Alt and op or Option, I can drag around to drag around a 3D axis. Select this rectangle and use these arrows, this blue arrow to move it to the front, the green arrow to move it to the top, the red arrow to move it left to right as you wish. And of course, it needs to be right in front like this. Now let's create the glass for this rectangle. So to do that, if I select the rectangle on the right, we have something called color. And if I click on this arrow, I can change what material this is. In this case, I want it to be glass. And as you can see, it's invisible now, but it's still there, trust me. Now to make it visible, I need to change the lighting from none to something like Lambert or physical, I prefer physical. And I can change the lighting to whatever preferences I like. For example, reflectivity, I can increase to something like one, metalness can be zero, roughness can be one, whatever you like. And this is now a nice little weird looking glass, but it's still something. Now I want to have that frosted glass effect. It's still not frosted yet. So if I click on this plus right next to material, I can then change from color to something called noise. And that is exactly what we want. If I click on this little noise panel right here, I can change the values as I want. So in this case, I want it to, the scale to be something like minus 0 0.03 or 02. And as you can see, it creates that nice little uh, TV noise, if you may. And of course, change the colors from gray to a black because the noise pellets should be able to differentiate themselves. And everything else is completely fine. I will reduce the noise, the opacity of the noise from 100 to something like 20 or 25. Ah, uh, see how it looks a little more realistic. And if I zoom in, uh, see how this nice little frosted glass effect has started to take place. Now what we need to do is click on plus again and change the color to something called Fresnel. And Fresnel will give it that nice gloss effect that we are looking for. So you can change the bias from 0 0.10 to 0 0.4. Ah, uh, see it's too white, I need it to be low. 0 0.1 or two will do just fine. Scale, I can increase from one to two, whatever you like. I prefer something like 0 0.5 or one. Intensity can be two, three, four, as you like. Factor should be one, otherwise it'll be completely white. And to give it more realism, I can change from normal to something like overlay or screen. Now it's still not giving me that glass look. What do I do now? If I go to the right, if I select the rectangle, go to the right and select glass, I can increase the blur 
to something like 50, 100, whatever I like. So 25 is the sweet spot and now we have a little more of a glass looking, frosted glass looking like. I also want to make this glass somewhat thick, otherwise it will vanish like this if I rotate it. So to do that, I will select the rectangle, go to extrusion, increase the extrusion as much as I like and that will increase or decrease the thickness of the glass. The bevel, of course, I can in increase the bevel to give it a little more glass and, uh, you know, a finished look like this. And bevel sides also you can increase or decrease according to your preference. This is fine. I also want to increase the corner radius to something like, I don't know, 24. This will give me that nice little corner radius. How amazing does this look already? Now I also want some text over this. How do I get that? There are There's everything available on top. If I click on T and I click right above this rectangle, it will paste it right above it. So I want something like Puneet's awesome project. And just like in any other, you know, text editor, you can just drag it around like that. You can edit the text, the font, everything from the right again. Now I want to group both of these, the text and the rectangle. I select both from the layers panel right here and I right click and say group selection. If it doesn't happen, just click on the rectangle, say group selection and drag the text inside the group. And that's about it. Of course, I'd like to change the object name to card or anything that you'd like. And that's about it. Now that is our nice little glass. However, I want to add a little more if, uh, realism to it. So to do that, I click on plus and then I can bring in my own lighting here. So a directional light will be nice for this case. And I can drag around this light with this blue arrow, just like we used to. And of course, it's too bright right now. So I will increase or decrease the brightness from here, 50, 60, whatever you like. You can increase or decrease the intensity. This is fine. Shadows, yes. Helper, mm, show, no, whatever you like. Size, you can increase or decrease. And depth also, you can increase or decrease. The more the depth, it looks like it's putting a shadow on this little shape here as well. Also, you can put it at an angle if you'd like, if you want that angle shadowed effect, as you can see, with the background right here. I'd like something like this for sure. Now we have a nice little transparent frosted glass look like we wanted with a nice little, uh, you know, lighting that will reflect on this like this, looking so amazing. Now I, you can put icons over this, text over it, whatever you like. You just have to click on plus and this will allow you to add stuff. If you want to add an icon or PNG or SVG, you can just drag it into this and it will place it right, right there. Now, everything is fine, but Puneet, how about adding a nice animation to this? This looks dull right now. Of course, we can do that. If I click on the group here, the card group, and click on events, I can add my own custom animations. To create a custom flip animation or something like that, you can always add multiple states, and just like you do it in Figma, you create multiple states, one base state and one uh, child state, you can do it here. However, for this one, we want it to be more realistic and of course, more interactive. So rather than saying mouse down, I'm going to say look at and see what this does. Ooh, I can just rotate or just move around my mouse and it rotates with it. Of course, the light will also act on it. See how it's doing it. Looks amazing. Looks fantastic. To make it better, of course, I will change the color to what I had in Figma and this is what we had. This will look so amazing, man. Of course, you can add more lights to it. You can add directional light to it if you'd like. You can add point light to it. Of course, I will be creating a final result and putting it for showing you guys. Oh, see how amazing this looks on a weird axis as well. So now how do we move to Figma with this nice little effect? If I click on export, there are multiple options, but I need to select public URL. Logo, you can hide or show, rotate, no. Limits, no, no. Pan, no. Zoom, no. Unless you want the user to be able to zoom in and out. And, I, and all you need to do is click on export. And that is essentially it. It does the magic. And after this, it will copy a version of this. Under this embed, you need to copy the embed copy. Now in Figma, I want to, now I want to come back to Figma, click on this rectangle. And if you haven't installed it, install it. It's called Anima plugin. To do that, you can go to community and say Anima. You will be able to find a plugin called Anima right here. And you just need to install it. It's free to download. Now, if I come back, I click on the rectangle, Command P or Control P on the keyboard, and I say Anima. 
Anima will allow us to get that 3D into this. And all we need to do is click on this rectangle and you need to click on embed code right here. There's so many cool features of Anima, but this is my favorite. So if I want, I can just paste that frame here, iframe here, and that's about it. That's all I needed to do. And now we save. Preview in browser is what we would like to do. In Figma, you won't be able to display it by default. Ah, and as you can see, if I rotate my mouse like this, see how amazing this glass is looking. Of course, if you added a few more lights, it would be better. But for now, this is absolutely amazing. All right, guys, so that was it for today's video. Make sure you tag me on Instagram, LinkedIn, wherever you, wherever you do it and post it on. And I would love to see how you guys have utilized this technique inside your Figma files as well. I will see you every Monday and Thursday with such tutorials, lessons, uh, amazing content every week. See you next time. Till next time, take care. God bless.